If you watched my last video of the Dollar Tree shop with me, well, I found a couple of new things and I wanted to put them all together in a Dollar Tree toy test. We are testing out Dollar Tree toys to see if they are worth your dollar. Hey, hey, you guys, it's Christina from the Purple Alphabet. We have gone to Dollar Tree, did a whole shop with me. That video has already been posted, so if you haven't seen that, go back and check it out. I'll put it down below in the description box. But now I have gotten a couple of things from Dollar Tree, and I wanna see if they're worth your dollar. So we're talking Dollar Tree toys. I do these types of videos every now and then, so I do have a playlist of past Dollar Tree toy test videos that you might wanna check out. So go ahead and look at that after you watch this video and you'll see a whole bunch of different things that we've tested and whether or not they pass the test of being worth a dollar or not. So without further ado, let's get started and test out some Dollar Tree toys. So we got quite a bit to test out today, you guys. We're gonna start off first with this bingo game set. This first appeared right around the holidays, right when they were bringing out the stocking stuff. It's actually a really nice package, but does it really work? Of course, if you guys have any different experience from me, guys, let me know down below in the comments because I want to hear your experiences too, whether or not I liked it or didn't like it. All right, so we have our little mini bingo balls here. Looks like we've got 60 of them, so we're going to have to break those apart. And then this is our bingo cage and then this is the stand there's a little plate to put it on when we have our numbers and at, you can't really see on here but there's actually a grid with um, all the numbers on here so you can put them in the correct spot here are our bingo cards these are kind of made out of a really thin cardboard kind of like the cardboard cereal box kind of cardboard and we have different colored bingo cards so two four six eight ten bingo cards so ten people can play this and then these are our bingo chips Oh, they're already coming apart. I'm gonna break apart all of our little balls here. Let me see how they go inside. Looks like they go right here on the top. Had to break out some scissors for this because they're not easy to take off, but they are easy to cut. Oh, they're flying everywhere too. So we have inserted them all inside of here in the cage. And as I looked at this, I saw there's a spot that you can roll them here right on the side of the holder. Next time I know that they can be put in there. And then up here, just put that in there. And there we go, we're set up. So a little handle here that will spin this around. And as you spin it, one should go right inside like that. So we have one and this one is 11. So I'd find 11 on my little grid here, put 11 there, and then everybody would try to find 11, which would be B11. I don't know if you can see here, there's actually a little catch back here. So as you turn it, this will fall into there and then the bingo numbers will roll down to the front. There's like a whole line down here of bingo numbers. So that's pretty cool. And then when you're all done playing bingo, you can just put them here on the side and they go right back in can play again. So I'd have to say that this is a very simplistic bingo game. The quality is pretty decent. I like how it works and functions. The pieces are a little rough here, but you could push probably file those down if that was a problem. Definitely for probably your five years old and up because the pieces are so small, but we're going to give this whole kit a thumbs up. Dollar Tree right now has a whole bunch of games and they usually have games, except they are some new games or at least new packaging. Uh, we have this one, which is called Pop and Hop, which I think is very similar to maybe a trouble game. So we're gonna take it out and check it out and see what's going on. On the back too, they have the full instructions. Might wanna keep the instructions in case you need those later. Oh, things are falling all over the place already. So it's got a cardboard back, which can slide out. I'm not too keen about that, but for a dollar game, that seems pretty decent. And then the plastic piece goes on top. Looks like we have a piece that just came out. Maybe that came out the top. Not sure where this little plastic piece came from. And then we have all of our colored balls to go with the game. Ah, it is the plastic piece is for the arrow. So be very careful when you open this, that you don't lose that little plastic piece to go with your arrow, because that's your spinner. Put this part together there we go so we have our spinner there i just had to put that together so each player selects four balls of one color and then places them in their home section then you spin and the player with the highest number goes first and once you start the game you spin again and you try and move so i got five here so out of my 
at home. I can move one of my balls out of home into the game board and then we have to go around the track and land them back in their spots. Just like you would on treble, right? Treble is just like this game. Functions fairly well. The size is good for travel if you want to take a quick travel game. The balls are good quality. The actual game board piece is just a really flimsy piece of cardboard, but the plastic is nice so it works. It doesn't exactly line up to the game pieces, but it still suits its function. And when you move the little pieces around, do seem to stay. However, if you have a pretty, how can we say, it, rambunctious player, they might move pretty quickly when you accidentally hit the game board and then that might be a little frustrating. I think with trouble, they actually are pegs maybe and they fit inside there so they don't move as easy. So for that, whoops, I'm gonna say a thumbs down down, but if you have a very careful player who is able to not move these pieces around so quickly, keep that in mind. I wish they were pegs because that would just make it a lot easier for these pieces not to go anywhere. For that, we're gonna do a thumbs down. Another game here we have is don't let them pop. Instructions on the back again. It says it comes with 22 discs, which are these little discs here. Game board, there's a little game dice, which is super, super tiny, and a label sheet. So we're gonna have to put the labels on the die, I think. Yeah, so let's do that. So I'm gonna have to say the stickers are just slightly bigger than the little cube here. And so they're gonna probably come off over time would be my guess. Oh, and one just came off. <laughs> That's not good. I would almost use a marker maybe. Here is our game board and you see you have this piece that goes all the way across. So it wants us to put all of our game pieces in. So we have to move this bar across. We put all of our game pieces in here. And I'm not sure if this is similar to a, a real game, like a mainstream game. If you know what game this is like, let me know. And then when you're done, you just gently push this back so there's some tension on all of the game pieces. So then you roll your little die here and then it tells you what color you have to remove from the game board. Each disc has points, small discs, these little tiny ones are one point. We have a large disc for three points and a medium for two. So you obviously want to get the more points. We don't want to let it pop. I got a yellow, so I'm going to go for a big one. Oh, that one looks hard. Let's try this one. Oh. <laughs> and it popped. All right, let's try it one more time and see if I can get it without it popping. All right, let's try this again. Actually really nervous. I'm going slow. <laughs> okay. Is it possible to do this without it popping? Let's see, one more time. All right, I got one. The trick is to kind of feel if it's loose enough and anything else is gonna move. Oh, I would have to say that's kind of fun. What should I try next? <laughs> it's kind of fun, it isn't easy, I'd have to say that. But if you have kids who like that kind of anticipation game, this might be a fun one to try. And for a dollar, that's kind of amusing to see if it's actually possible. So we're gonna give it a thumbs up just for the novelty. Now the game for you right now is the hockey game. I feel like this one's been around a while though. I might not have paid any attention to it. All right, this one's pretty sturdy. It's a nice piece of plastic here. And it looks like we have two balls. This inside is that little flimsy cardboard, but it's pretty supported by another plastic piece. And you got your fl flippers over here, and those seem to work really good too. Let's see what happens. Of course, I'm playing by myself here. I'd have to say that that's actually decent. I do kind of wish that it was bigger, but for a little tabletop game, I think with two players actually doing it, I think that you'd actually be able to have a good game. Maybe I need to take this to the kids and let them Show me how it works. I've got a helper with me. So we did have some troubles. It did get stuck here and there, but you just move it and it will go right into it. So we're gonna give this one a thumbs up. That was kind of fun and it actually worked. Next up, we have the DIY rock painting kits. These are in the Valentine section and they actually have several different styles of these. I wanted to put them in the toy test to see how they did because usually we have those ceramic plaster painting kits at Dollar Tree that come with the paint and the paintbrush, but these are rocks or they appear to be rocks. It could actually be plaster. So I'm gonna break these open, see how the paint works on them and how they end up looking. The one I have is You Rock and then this one is Be Mine. 
mine. I thought they'd be great gifts, especially for the little ones to make themselves. These did really well. I liked the size of them. I liked the weight of them. They, they felt like rocks. They are made of plaster, and so the paint went on very, very, very well. I think this would be excellent gifts. Definitely gonna give this one a thumbs up. Let's try the spin art kits. Some of you guys actually wrote me and told me you loved this. You thought it was excellent for what it is. I was super curious because spin art kits, like the nice ones, are super, super expensive. So let's see what we get in here. We have our little paint in three different colors, the primary colors. And then, ooh, okay, we have our spin art tray. And this one actually has a handle you use to do the spinning. So no batteries involved in this one. Here's our paper in just circles. And these are pretty nice. These are eight, you get eight sheet. And then this is the spinning device. All right, so let's give this a shot. I like that they're primary colors because then you can do some mixing, right? Get some really pretty patterns. So it says we put our paper right on here. There's like a glossy side and a flat side. Does it say which one to use? Maya, can you turn it down just a little bit? Doesn't say so we're gonna just slide it in the matte side down and then it goes right into our little spin art machine so it's right on top so here's our handle that I told you about and you just crank it it works so well and it only took one crank that's cool so it's catching on right inside that little mechanism there so to make sure it goes in there wow that's cool okay nice all right should we try it out then All right, I might need two hands for this. So far, I'm not getting it. There we go. I feel like I've had another person. It might work a little better. Oh, there we go, there's a little bit. Let's try another color. Whoa, it came off. So I spin it so fast that it actually came off. Let's try one more time. Yeah. Okay, I definitely have to say it's a two person job. You need one person to work the hand crank and then one person to be doing the paint, but it actually did what it's supposed to do. I would highly recommend only using a couple of drops, especially because this is so small, but it did work and we got some spin art out of it. This one actually mixed colors and made some orange too. So I'm gonna give this a thumbs up simply because it does what it's supposed to do. It's not the best, the higher quality spin art machine I would have to say are far better. I have one from Lakeshore Learning that we absolutely love and works so, so well. But if you are on a budget and just want something fun to do, this is a definite option. It does what it says to do. It's small and compact and it's only a dollar. So thumbs up on this one. If you are new here, make sure to click subscribe. I would love it if you were to join the Purple Alphabet family. And if there is a Dollar Tree toy that you would like to see tested, let me know down below in the comments. I would like to check that out. Click subscribe and you guys give me a thumbs up to show your love.